Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Last week, we started a new series uh, called Real and Restored Relationships. I think a lot of us were with us, and we had a really good time last Sunday. I went through singleness and dating, talking about seven myths of relationships, and I really pray that something spoke to you, because as I was preparing it, it was really, you know, again, kind of sharing part of Beth and I's story as well, some of the things that we went into our relationships with. So maybe if you missed it, I really do encourage you to go and, and listen to it, because I think there's something in there that can really help you. And then today, I'm excited, because we're going to be doing something a little bit different, as you can tell by the ruckus happening behind me. We're actually going to be doing a little bit of an interview today um, on the second part of our of our series on marriage. So we're going to be talking today about how we can restore our marriages, how we can restore our relationships. Um, And I was thinking, you know, I could come up and I could preach about it, but there's a couple in our church that has a really powerful story uh, when it comes to the restoration that they found in their relationship. And so what I thought as I was praying about it, it was kind of last minute. It was like, and I think it was like two weeks ago. I was like, hey, can I meet you? I have something I want to talk to you about, right? And then I met uh, with Jeff and we had a little bit of a chat saying, hey, would you be willing to come and share your story um, with us as a church? And he kindly, him and his wife, Joanna, kindly said yes. And so what I want to do is I want to invite them up, Jeff and Joanna Stoffer, and they're going to come up and they're going to share some of their stories. Let's give it up for them as they come today. Hello. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Again, I, we, uh, this is very different. You know, usually I, I, I speak a lot, but I thought today, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not at all what it was. But uh, again, I just thought this would be a really powerful story um, for them to come up and kind of share some of their story with us. And so real quick, before we kind of dive into the story, why don't you share kind of how you met, share a little bit about who you are, how many kids you have, if you have grandkids, whatever that is. And so just share that so we can get to know you um, a little bit better. Hello? No, there we are. There it is. Well, uh, uh, you already met a couple of our grandchildren running up front here, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Worshipping well. <laughs> I thought, that's my grandkids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, like you, I, I met, or I noticed Joanna across the room at a youth event hey. uh, many years before we met and many years before we actually started talking, because she thought I was a jerk. I thought she was stuck up. And <laughs> then we actually met in church, and then we... <laughs> talked right. and we were married within a year I think okay. <laughs> we have four children we have four children and five grandchildren um, we uh, our grandchildren are uh, the best ever and uh, they're gorgeous <laughs> and we were very proud yeah. that's amazing yeah yeah I saw them running around I was really excited about that it's some worshiping kids um, that's that's so beautiful um, thank you for sharing that I think some of your family's here today Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of attack that side of the church. Yeah, exactly. So they can see a better look at your face, mm-hmm. a little bit of your face. But yeah, thank you um, again for just being here. Um, they've been a part of our church, I think, for uh, six months, yeah. something like that. And so we've met with them a few times. Amazing, amazing couple. If you haven't had a chance to kind of chat with them and get to know them, um, they are incredible. Um, and so I guess we just want to kind of want to dive into kind of your story. Um, so Jeff, if you don't mind kind of just sharing, because you've this past two years for you, I mean, uh, a lot, you've gone through a lot that you've gone through together, but I think it kind of started um, with something that you kind of figured out. And so why don't you just share a little bit of your story um, with us today? Sure. Uh, for most of our married life, I struggled, struggled with pornography, um, sexual sin. And about two years ago, we were sitting down watching online church, as so many people did two years ago. Yep. Uh, and the title came up on the screen, How to Quit Porn. And it was at that moment I realized there was hope. I, had, I could actually be free. I was getting a plan on how to be free. And so it's been a very difficult journey at times, uh, very, a lot of emotions, a lot of despair at moments, but a lot of joy and a lot of more peace than I've ever known before in my life. Um, to discover God's love for us and to discover his character. I was just following a different study one day 
And I came into Psalms where it says, for his anger only lasts for a moment, but his faithfulness endures forever. Weeping may come at night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. And it was, I saw the Father's heart in that verse, and I just realized, oh, he actually still loves me. He has not given up on me. And it was difficult because at that point where I finally had the confidence to step into the light and open up and start to confess my sin, that that same moment of clarity for me began a completely different journey for Joanna of, wait, what just happened? And while I felt like I was in a a sea, a stormy sea, I could see the light, but it was, for her, it was just darkness at that point. Yeah, so I guess like Joanna, like, I mean, this is a, you know, two-year journey is different because I think for you, uh, Jeff, it was a little bit of a longer journey. Um, for you, you know, two years ago, maybe you kind of opened your eyes to something that maybe you didn't even know kind of existed in your relationship. So how did you respond when you, you know, Jeff had approached you and kind of shared this, this story with you? You know, when that title came up, How to Be Free from por- Porn, um, on the TV, it's like a light bulb came on. <laughs> and it's like, I felt God, I, I believe that. I believe God's, this is what's been uh, wrong in your marriage. I was blindsided. I, I thought we had a good marriage, um, and I was totally blindsided. I did not see it. Um, and when he confessed, um, I started to spiral. Um, I was so devastated, and I couldn't believe that for 29 years that he had been watching pornography, and um, it broke my heart. And I've been through some tough times in my life, but this was something that it was so hard. And even looking at him, all I could see was pain. And when I would look at him, when he he told me um, of his addiction, I looked at him and I'm like, I don't know you. Like, who are you? I don't know you. And it just, it was tough. It was really tough. And... I just can't, it's hard to put into words, but it was, it was, I broke, he broke my heart. Yeah, because I think when we look at, you know, marriage, when you look at relationships, um, sometimes uh, we are responding to someone else's actions or it's our own actions and we have two different approaches Mm -hmm. to it, to whether it's our addiction or someone else's addiction or our brokenness or someone else's brokenness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your story really just shares, you know, you guys were broken in completely different ways. And I think two years ago, you kind of got to this kind of point in your relationship where it was either going to be probably like, this is the end or like, this is, we're going to make this work. Um, And so when we talk about, you know, how do we restore relationship? So I think that's kind of the point of what we want to learn is how do we restore relationship? You know, you know, you have that moment where, you know, brokenness was really there, like obviously present. So what did you do as a couple or as individuals in order to try and, you know, get healthy individually or get healthy? together when God had been working on my heart for about two months two three months leading up to that point and he was I was already realizing that I'm broken I need I need help I need a different life and I was ready to let go of the stuff that held me back that drug me down and it really was a surrender God, I can't do this on my own. I, I've made a mess of it. I mean, looking back now, I realize I almost completely blew up in my marriage. And I'd had enough of my guidance, my personal guidance. I realized that I didn't have the answer. But so I just gave myself over to God. I dove into scripture. I told Joanna, I will find whatever I to- tool I need to stay free. Because from the moment that came up and I, I surrendered to the process, I, was, I had a freedom that I'd never known before. And I said, 
okay, I, I need to keep this. I'm not falling back into this again. And I just threw myself into it and didn't care. And it was, there was a lot of difficult times where I just, you know, just this reciting scripture over and over um, kept my head from exploding. Because that's what it felt like it was ready to do. Uh, I'd put a lot of garbage in my head and not just from pornography, but regular television and conversations in life, movies, whatever it is, it's just all compounded and created chaos in my brain. Um, there's a space we have between our ears that in sin, it's just darkness. It's a painful place to be, so we try to numb it, whether we're using alcohol or drugs or sexual activities. But when we're set free, it's a beautiful place. It's bigger. It's bright. The presence of God is there, and we can just, instead of escaping, we go and are recharged in the presence of God, and it's it goes from a dungeon to a palace, and it's just amazing. And that's what I had to learn how to do. Yeah, exactly. That's so so amazing. I think you think about, you know, there's a song, Graves in the Gardens, too, right? That's what God does, right? He always takes our broken grave, our death and our sin, and he turns it into a beautiful garden when we kind of let him be the gardener, you know? Um, and so I think, thank you for sharing that. And just real quick, before I want to hear your um, your part of the story, but um, that freedom you said you found, like, wh- like, what was your process, or how did you know that it was there? You know what I mean? Like, how did you feel, okay, this is different right now? I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever tried to put it into words before. Yeah. Um, learning a lot of new language for a lot of different things I did not know existed. I just knew. There was a determination that I was not able to have before. There was a resolve that while I desperately wanted to be free for years and for decades, I couldn't have that kind of resolve. But I had it, and I just had that, wow. that sense of calm. Even in the storm, I did have that sense of calm. Yeah, I think that, that peace we sang about was really, you know, that just kind of builds up the faith and the peace just kind of builds up inside of us. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And then I guess for you, Joanna, you know, obviously your journey in this was very different. Like you said, you kind of felt blindsided. So, you know, as you feel blindsided, like what was your process um, to find healing and f- freedom, restoration? Mine was a lot different than his, of course, because um, I blame myself for his addiction. And I didn't, my identity, I had no identity. Um, I, I just felt like nothing. Um, and the first three months of our journey together, um, it was rough. Um, I, we couldn't find help for me. Um, we had went to a pastor and uh, talked to him, and he just made me, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to put down pastors, please, I'm not, and this was not Pastor Dustin. Um, (laughs) um, He couldn't give me hope. I needed hope. That's all I needed was hope, and he did not give me hope. Um, I mean, he told me truth that, you know, we we need to forgive. Forgiveness is a choice. That is so true, but also, forgiveness is a process, and you can't expect me to forgive somebody right away. I just can't do that. I just I couldn't do that. And so I had no hope, and I had a lot of issues. Um, it was rough. I know. Um, try Googling. My husband's addicted to pornography. I need help. And what you get? You don't get help. <laughs> you need to know the language. <laughs> Betrayal. You know, uh, it was rough. Uh, we did a lot of Googling, both of us. We, you know, couldn't find help. Uh, uh, anyway, Jeff ended up finding a group, and um, the person that leads that group uh, said, how's your wife doing? And Jeff's like, not good at all. And I ended up uh, doing a 45-minute call um, with Kelly. I'll just say Kelly. And she gave me hope. She met with me. She'd been down, um, had been betrayed, um, and how God had, you know, restored her. And um, 
Jesus gave me hope. I, I don't remember a lot of stuff at the beginning of betrayal because of, of the trauma uh, that is actually caused by betrayal. Um, so some of it's very still blurry for me, but that was the thing that I remember the most is just seeing and having hope, hope that God could help me, you know, because I didn't have that hope from, from that pastor. And I think it really, if I can't get hope from church, how am I ever going to get this, my heart healed? And that was a real big thing. And anyway, I ended up getting coached. I ended up going into a betrayal trauma group, uh, which now I lead a group of women. And it's just, I learned so much about myself and how to put God first. And the first uh, thing is just, I started memorizing scripture. Um, so really in, in our um, journey together was separate in a way at first because I needed, um, I once told him, I'm like, started coaching and I'm like, I don't care about you. And that, that really sounds really bad, but I don't care about you right now. I just care about myself and I just need, um, I need to concentrate on myself because then when we do that and God starts to change us, then we can come together as a couple. And we couldn't do that until we, you know, put God, put God first in our life. And then we started coming together as a couple. If I could just interject, it may sound harsh, but when she told me that, it was like, oh, she's okay. Right. She's with Jesus. Yeah. She will be okay. Now I can focus on myself. Now I had taken that weight on myself that I never should have had, yep. but I was able to give it to God at that point and just focus on myself. And it was such, gave me even more peace at that moment. Right. I think a part of it is where you get to a point where you start, finally start to trust God mm -hmm. to take care of your spouse or take care of your kids or take care of whatever it is in the relationship, which is a really tough place to get to. Because it's like, yes. I can do it. You know, I can make sure that they're okay. I can make sure they're healthy. I can help them. But it's like really, like I think I talked about even last week, you know, just trusting God to make the new inside of them is really the key to that. And I think when you talk about healing and restoration, talking about betrayal and addiction, I think really if we want to try and find healing in our marriages, it's going to have to come through community. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to find uh, connection or restoration uh, alone. Um, because the, we just won't be able to because we're going to try and try and try and find resources and you'll find them. But unless you're willing to mm -hmm. actually approach other people with your story and find the healing and restoration that you need, I think it's going to be really, really tough to find it. Mm -hmm. um, and so obviously, you know, two-year journey of connection and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, when in the journey did you start to feel, because um, I'm assuming, maybe I shouldn't assume, but for the first little bit, like I said, first three months were really hard because you know, you kind of probably felt both isolated and kind of alone, yes. at least from each other. Yes. And so when did you start to feel, okay, we're starting to connect um, together again? When did you start to feel that happening? And kind of what took place in that? I'm going to start with this one because, you know. <laughs> we have different um, answers. Yeah, exactly. We're taught as betrayed women um, that we can't um, go by what they say because they've been in secret. They've lied for 29 years. You go by what you see. And... Um, I thank God, like he put um, things on his devices. Um, he also would start, he started praying for me every night and reciting scripture that he was, was uh, listening to. And I hated it. <laughs> oh, I remember sometimes I was on my side of the bed. He was on his side of the bed. And I'm like, oh, but you know, it was terrible. But you know what? It did. It changed me. I really believe that. It changed my heart toward him that I didn't hate him so much. I didn't, you know, I shouldn't say hate, that's a little drastic, but I kind of did. And, you know, it did, that scripture and him reciting and, and the different things that he would, he would do and how he was changing and how he was putting, putting God first. And when he had told me about his porn addiction, I said, why don't you be the man of God and rise up and be the man of God that you're supposed to be in our 29 years of marriage. And I think... That was kind of harsh, but, you know, I really believe that he, you know, that's what he did. I don't know if I answered that. God question. told me that, too. 
I mean, yeah, like I think this is real though, because I think those of us who are married, like I think we've all had moments where we felt betrayed by one another or we felt judged by one another or whatever. There's been addiction present. And these are, these are real conversations because I think it, it, when, you're, when you're in the marriage, especially when there's a struggle, mm-hmm. um, you feel so alone. Because you're like, I, you also feel, especially sometimes as believers, are like, oh, I can't tell anybody about this. They're going to judge me. They, yeah. They're going to think that we're not okay. They're not, you know? And so we feel that we can't even share our story, our very personal things, because we're afraid that we're not going to be, you know, welcome in church anymore, or our kids yeah. won't want relationship with us, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I think there's that part of that where we're just so afraid of what people will think that we don't feel like we want to bring things into the light. But I think, like, like we said, like connection um, with other people is really, really key. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thank you uh, for sharing that, Joanna. And I don't know if you have anything you want to share about, you know, when you start to feel connected yeah. on your side as well. We were about eight months in, and I, I had the realization, oh, we can actually begin to start living again. We, we, I mean, we were on hold. Our lives were on hold. Um, and when I... And when I kind of had that stability um, and gone through enough healing, too, because we don't end up in addiction just because we had one bad day. We end up in an addictive behavior and lifestyle because of things that have happened to us, and we learn poor ways to cope, and then that just grows, and we do have an enemy that's out there to feed that. Um, And so I had to actually had to dig deep in the groups I was in and in the coaching that I received and find those areas where that pain started and and just take it to God and let him finally heal those old ancient memories that were causing pain still. And I, I just look at where we are today and where we were and... Is, is restoration a, a, a place that we arrive to? I believe it, it's, it's a road of restoration. It's a road of salvation. And I'm progressing on it, and we're progressing on it. Our marriage is progressing on it. And it's, it's not somewhere to ever arrive. It's a place to be. It's a road to be on. And I just, I've had more peace and joy and celebration <laughs> I was reading through my journal. Journaling is a really good thing. Uh, of I was probably about five months in, and that some song came on the speaker, and I was singing and dancing, and I just thought, it doesn't get better than this. And then God said, oh, yes, it does. <laughs> and I was like, I just stopped, and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. I think, you know, when we go back to the beginning of the story, really where your healing started was with vulnerability. You know, mm-hmm. and I think the scariest place sometimes when you're in a relationship and you're maybe you are hiding something or you're, you know, you're trying to find healing while on your own. Right. Um, the, the biggest thing to start the healing process is that space of vulnerability, because mm-hmm. I think vulnerability takes so much courage, even with people we trust the most. Right. Usually when you think about your spouse, you're like, that's the person that you would trust the most. But oftentimes there's still things they're like, man, I don't even know if I if I'm ready to share this part of my story. Um, and so like. I know you kind of shared a little bit about a little bit about that, but how, like, how if you're willing to share, how how did you get to a place where you said, okay, I'm gonna be able to tell Joanna about this? I had started reading my Bible again, listening to a daily devotional, and then heard about a book that sounded. I want that. I want that no hurried lifestyle. Yeah. And Whoops. in that book, I just felt such a an invitation from Jesus of relationship. And I started moving towards that. And a prayer life started up that I'd never been able to do before. Uh, I was having more success against the addictive behaviors. And leading up to that day, probably about two weeks before that, I just felt God saying, you're going to have to tell Joanna. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm not really excited about that. I mean, it's there's the shame, <laughs> understatement, right? There's the embarrassment. There's the sheer terror. I mean, not only is it that, but this is the person that I hurt. Yeah. This is the person I knew that she would not react in a nonchalant way. Yeah. I knew it would be explosive and devastating. 
And so sometimes you think, well, I'll just save my wife from that. I'll just save, I'll save this person from that kind of pain. You're not. You're, you're not. You're in the situation. You've built it. Now you've got to live in it for a while until God can tear it down and build something better. And I knew that I had to walk in the light. And that was one of the main things of that sermon was you can't do it on your own. You're not strong enough. None of us are. The, the saying in the book, and every man's battle, it's not supposed to be every, person, every man's struggle. Yeah, we can win. We have been called to righteousness and purity, and it is possible. The old saying, I'm married, not dead. Uh, that's not what the Bible tells me. Yeah. We've been crucified with Christ and ris we've ri been risen with him for righteousness and holiness. It is possible. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I think if we, you know, just kind of hearing all the parts of the story, of your story, I think for all of us um, in our marriages or even in our relationships with our friends or with our kids, I think there's a lot of, sometimes a lot of pain and I think if we just really think about it, in order to start the healing or restoration process, we have to be vulnerable with one another um, about the struggles we're having, um, vulnerable in, in our pain. Because I think, I think you shared this a little bit, Jeff, is that, you know, healing's on the other side of pain, right? And so, you know, even when you get like a scab, it's healing, you know, it gets itchy, you know, you try and pick <laughs> at it, you know what I'm talking about? And uh, I think it's so real. That's like my story, okay? Um, and so th there's always healing, though, on the other side of pain. Um, and, you know, your marriage wouldn't be where it is today mm -hmm. if there wasn't pain in it, which I think is, we, we, it sucks because we hate that part. Yeah. But I think that it, in, in our relationships, we have to get to a point where we realize that the pain is worth saving our marriages. The pain is worth saving um, our relationships. And again, we hate it. But even when Jesus went to the cross, it was painful, but it was, the pain was worth um, the reward mm -hmm. that, that we got through salvation. And so I think, again, that's the starting place is vulnerability. You know, find a place where you can be vulnerable with one another and connect, get connected again. So I think there's probably some disconnection, um, I'm sure, you know, over 29 years. Um, and so I guess if I, we go to the last kind of question I want to get through today uh, is what advice would you give um, to married couples when it comes to vulnerability and connection and um, restoration when it comes to their struggles or the things that they're walking through uh, in their relationship? I think communication is key. I mean, um, we... Even Thursday in my women's group, we're talking about um, our marriages before betrayal and now our marriages. And all, everybody, all the women in, our, in the group could say that their marriages were better now than they were before. And I think communication and just having those hard conversations. Um, but also, even three weeks ago, you know, Jeff was leaving on a, on a sales trip. He, and, you know, it was Sunday night, and we cuddled all night, and then he left, and I phoned, and I'm like, you know, I'm not okay with this, you know. You cuddle me before you leave on a sales trip, but we're on each side of the bed every other time. This is not intimacy, you know, and we need that intim intimacy and just that, whoops, human contact you know, we need that. And I think we take it um, for granted, each other. We really do. And you, especially when you've been longer, you get married. Um, you just, you need to build intimacy. It doesn't have to be sexual. It can be, you know, reading a book together. We did, we read a book together, The Five Love Languages. Really great book. And just doing different things, having dates and having those really good conversations and deep conversations especially and also putting God first I mean that is when we put God first um, our marriages become great <laughs> that's it there's hope and it takes surrender even our marriage can be an idol above God and if we hold our marriage higher or our spouse's comfort higher than we hold God, they'll crumble under the pressure. Yeah. None of us can take that pressure. It, it's only God who can do that. And just surrender to the process. Surrender to our Creator. 
the one who loves us so much, the one who died for us. Yeah, wow. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Jeff and Joanna. Thank you uh, for sharing your story and sharing the healing. And I think really the main thing I think Jeff shared is hope. You know, there is hope in your relationship. I truly believe that even with your kids, um, there is hope in your relationships that have been, you know, struggling or on the rocks. Like, there is hope. And so, um, if, Jeff, you don't mind just kind of praying for us, for our relationships, for our marriages, and for, you know, restoration. That would be amazing. Thank you. Oh, loving Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your greatness, for your goodness, for the love that you have for us. Lord, you love every single person here and watching online. He says you died for us. You died for our, our complete restoration. I pray for every marriage here. You would reveal the areas where we need you so that you can heal those cracks. Pray for everyone struggling in an area in secret. Lord, I just pray peace to them so that they will have courage to step out and trust you that there is healing in the light and that you will meet them there. God, you are light. So we, we draw near to you. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for each one of us to reflect on where we are and who we want to be. We want to be your children, wholly devoted to you, set apart, and walk in the love that you have for us. I just pray for strength and courage for everyone. God, I just thank you for this church that we can come together and gather together in your name and see you move because you are so awesome. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, thank you both so much for sharing your story. I know it takes vulnerability, which is what we talked about. So you did a good job. Um, so anyway, thank you so much. Let's just give it up for them again one more time.